So this uh, relates to what would be uh, intro to complex exponentials. And a way to make a sense of complex exponential with the math that you have been taught in math 3a and math 3b is by using Taylor polynomials. So you know if you have a sine of x, this can be expanded out using Taylor polynomials. Let me do that. Sine of x, oh wait, uh, let me just declare variable x to be sure. Sine of x, that's an expression. And I can, um, I think there's a, I think a Taylor is it. Okay, so sine of x, that gives me an expression. And I can expand it out with a Taylor uh, bound method. And when I do that, let me just check. I don't know what did I do wrong. Uh, all right, I gotta <laughs> refer to <laughs> documentation to see <laughs> what this is, um, what argument. Oh, I might need to specify the order of the Taylor polynomial I want. That's probably what it was. Yeah, Taylor self argument and um, oh, I do I need to. Yeah, I need to tell it what with respect to what variable, what's the um, the point around which I'm expanding, and the order. So let me do that. Uh, or uh, let me just do it this in the uh, normal order. So Taylor polynomial of <laughs> sine of x uh, in terms of the variable x, um, and uh, we are expanding it about x equals zero, and let me expand it out to quite a few terms, uh, seven uh, order. I wouldn't do this by hand, but this is, and I have to go right to left um, to write it in the way that we normally write it. So this would be x um, minus that one over six there is one over uh, three factorial. Numerically, they're the same. x to the third power plus that one over 120 there is one over five factorial, x to the fifth power. Uh, minus um, that 1 over 50, 40. without checking, I know that's a 1 over 7 factorial. So let me write that down, um, x to the 7th power, and so on. This uh, Taylor polynomial is a way to approximate uh, a, a, approximate um, a transcendental function, like a sine of x, or a special function in terms of polynomial functions, which have really nice properties that help you handle uh, different things. Let me get Taylor polynomial of cosine as well. So cosine in terms of x. Uh, let me go up to a sixth order. I mean, I could say seven, but it, it'll only go to a sixth order because seventh term vanishes. Um, so cosine of x x minus oh not x um so the your leading term there is just a constant one uh minus one um two factorial times x squared plus and that one over twenty four that is a four factorial x to the fourth power minus one seventy uh, seven twenty that's a, a six factorial uh x to the sixth power and so on. um so, so this is something you have seen, and this is what justifies small angle approximation that you have seen in lecture before. And what I want to, what I needed to demonstrate with maybe five more minutes is how this can be used to, to make a sense of a complex exponential. This is a formula called Euler's formula that you might have learned in trigonometry. Um, if you haven't, then this is where I'm telling you what it is. Euler's formula says this. It says an exponential of um, imaginary number times x can be broken out this way. Cosine of x plus i times the sine of x. And if you learned this in trigonometry, um, you might not have been told why it is the case. And when you look at something like an exponential of an imaginary number, I hope your reaction is, what does that even mean? I mean, you have a sense of what exponential of a real number is, but when you have an imaginary number, it's a uh, 
one of those things that should cause you to wonder. And this is uh, how I want to help you see it. Um, and this is a quite general procedure in math when people want to expand the applicable domain of a special function. When we originally defined the sine and cosine and exponential, uh, we had the real numbers in mind. In fact, for sine and cosine, it was even similar. We had the acute angles, angles less than pi over two in mind initially. And we expanded this to all set of, set of real numbers. And now we are somehow proposing expanding this to uh, complex or imaginary numbers and in the process of doing that there is some kind of connection being drawn between an exponential and oscillatory cosine sine functions so i have these taylor polynomials of sine and cosine and let me write a taylor polynomial of exponential taylor polynomial of exponential of x in terms of x expanded from x equals zero let's go to seventh order now, as you look at this, oh, let me rerun it. Uh, it run it again. Okay, there it is. And uh, you need to read this right to left. I hope you see some matches. So as you read to right to left, this one matches kind of with this one for cosine and th this x kind of matches with this x, one half x squared. It kind of matches with this one half x squared, except sine is now minus. This one sixth x to the third power kind of matches this, except there's a minus sign again. x to the fourth power, it matches with this uh, term from cosine of, Taylor expansion of cosine of x, same sign. This x to the fifth power matches with this term for sine of x. x to the sixth power, it matches with this term, except oh, sine is uh, flipped again. Um, and x to the seventh power, it matches with this again. And I guess uh, two things. One, um, you have this thing happening where whenever this is an even power, it matches with the Taylor expansion of cosine. Whenever this is an odd power, it matches with the Taylor expansion of sine. So that's one. And two, uh, you have this uh, sign of the term that flips uh, every other term. Like uh, uh, every other term here, it flips from positive to minus, positive to minus. Same thing with the sign, but with the exponential, it's all positive. So we wish there's a way to flip the sign for every two powers of something. And the algebraic object that does that is imaginary number i. So when I do, uh, I hope uh, maybe it might be capital I, that's the imaginary i. Uh, let me try doing it this way. Yeah. And let me just expand this out again so that there's room for everything to fit in one line. Now watch this. If you combine every single term with the i, that will match up to your sine of x Taylor expansion. Every term with no i, they match with your cosine uh, Taylor expansion. And because i squared is minus 1, every two powers, you have the sign flipping as we were hoping it would do. I wonder if it'll do full simplify. Um, yeah, okay, it doesn't here. It might do here. Let me just... Uh... Yeah, all right, it doesn't do anything. Um, <laughs> but, um, so, with this Taylor expansion, you see the connection between the Taylor expansion of exponential and Taylor expansion of sine and cosine. And um, um, knee-jerk response might be, so what does that got to do anything? Taylor expansion is an approximation method. So, I mean, they are still not exactly the same. 
But if you recall back to what was taught to you in Math 3B, is the Taylor polynomial of the cosine of x, it converge, the radius of convergence of that approximation is infinity. Same thing with the Taylor polynomial of sine. Same thing with the Taylor polynomial of exponential. So, so if you promise to include all the terms going out to infinity, then these results are exactly equivalent to each other. So when we say cosine, uh, so when we say this, that co exponential of ix is equal to cosine of x plus i times the sine of x, that can be fully justified using this uh, Taylor polynomial. And that's uh, how you would uh, derive the Euler's formula if you needed to derive it. And, and this is the part that's uh, extracurricular. Um, using this relationship, you can connect this uh, complex exponential to oscillatory phenomena. And in fact, uh, we can solve our simple harmonic oscillator situations using not with exponential because exponential doesn't work, but with a complex exponential.